America is at risk. When America was during the good times, we'll say the 1950s, and I think we can all agree when, when there's a lot of money, when everything is safe, everything is good. But when America starts declining more and more and more, you are going to see more and more tyrannical measures being implemented by this government. And American citizens, you know, and I'm sure they saw a little bit during the COVID lockdowns and whatnot, they haven't seen anything yet. It's going to get extremely dangerous in America. Welcome back. Uh, we are with uh, Mr. David Bernblatt, the author of a book, Patriot Betrayed. And Mr. David uh, is, is a former member of the U.S. Army and also FBI who has been kicked out, let's say, from his country for being the crime of a patriot and for criticizing the, uh, the U.S. government of being controlled by the various corporations. And also he has been facing intimidations for uh, speaking the truth. But uh, Mr. David, he has said in his book, when you are afraid to speak truth, then eventually you will become afraid of the truth. So he is a victim of speaking the truth. And this is what is today's United States. Mr. David, welcome back to the second session. Thank you very much. Um, you know that just we, we were talking about, uh, as you say, the U.S. has become a, a, a kind of the cape keep in the hands of the corporations. And you say that U.S. is a kind of the mafia regime. And as I said, it is they are behaving like Al Capone. And we know the uh, hostility of the United States in many countries in the world. And they are even meddling into domestic affairs of many countries, including my country. Bangladesh. Uh, if you are aware that Joe Biden, I mean, under his uh, so-called globalist policy, he is trying to involve into many countries unwarranted. Of course, uh, his involvement has uh, the interest of those big bosses of the corporations. I mean, it is when he is talking that he's uh, trying to help Bangladesh in democracy or free and fair election. You and I know uh, there is it's not the truth. Actually, he has other interests and the interest uh, he has to, to be served, he wants to serve the interest. He tries to serve the interest of the corporation. So with these realities, uh, as someone who is also an analyst, you. Uh, what do you think, I mean, what is the future of the uh, political relationship between Bangladesh and United States? And what do you exactly predict? What the Biden administration may do with Bangladesh? Well, I would say my first suggestion is, and this goes to many countries in the world to include Bangladesh, and that is fight for your sovereignty. Most countries in the world, whether they know it or not, or they will admit it or not, are American colonies. And I specifically look also to the Western countries, like Australia, New Zealand, Europe. These are American colonies through our NATO, through all these economic. And so it is amazing how many few countries, I get, you know, probably Russia and China are definitely two of the countries that come to my mind that are, you know, sovereign countries in relations to America. But do not fool yourself. America wants to infiltrate your country politically economically and also militarily so you are a you know a a colony of america that serves its interest now the american people are waking up because the american people are realizing that when a country like bangladesh is a colony of america yes you will serve the interest to the american corporations the american government 
But to the American citizens, we are getting sort of used ourselves in funding this global empire. So I would say number one is maintain your sovereignty. I would say number two, and again, I, I consider myself a China expert. So where other countries I, I want to I don't want to talk too in depth, but I would say because Bangladesh is obviously located in the Asia Pacific region, there is an increased scrutiny now of America. And that is my prediction of, of China is I don't predict China is going to be a world superpower. However, I do predict China in the Asia specific uh, Pacific region will have a much larger influence and America does not want that. So a lot of times now America is doubling their efforts in the Asia Pacific region to maintain their colonial status on these countries away from China. And like I said, I think the main thing for all countries in the world to include yours is many people are blind to this and they don't want to admit this or they don't know, but you're effectively an American colony and you should strive to be an independent sovereign nation because America, whether they do it overtly or covertly, there is an unbelievable amount of influence that's happening in countries. And why is that? To serve the American corporations. The American uh, the American foreign policy goes something like this. And this is a really simplified version, but I view it like this. They first send in, you could say, the civilian corporations, and they want to make money. Coca-Cola, Kmart, whatever it is, they want to make money. However, if you push back, what you're starting to see China now push back, then they send in the military industrial complex companies to go in to make war. Either way, it's all about making money. And so, again, if you are not on the money stream of the American corporations, American government, then you're going to be looked upon as an adversary. And then dangerous times are going to come. So that would be my main thing to the people of Bangladesh. And that is always remind yourself, do you have a sovereign country? Yes or no. And do not underestimate the influence of America covertly or overtly has on your country. So it means you say that the uh, United States, I mean, the, as you say, Biden administration is trying to turn Bangladesh into a colony of the United States. And for, to achieve that goal, Biden administration and uh, let's say the United States will continue its uh, activities overtly or covertly and in in necessity they may even join hands with the with the radical islamic groups in bangladesh uh, which can serve their purpose so yeah so you see so bangladesh, never... you mean bangladesh is now is under a serious uh u.s conspiracy well, I would say this, Let, let's use common sense and look at the country of America. We have the Pacific Ocean, we have the Atlantic Ocean, we have a friendly country to the North Canada, and Mexico, not so much of a threat. So America is in a very good place. So now the next question is, why do we have military station in over 166 countries around the world? When we have two oceans to our east and west, we have a friendly country, North Canada. And again, Mexico is not really that much of a threat at all. So why do we need all this military firepower spread throughout the world? Because we are the modern day Roman Empire and we want control and influence to include Bangladesh. So again, if there is some type of viable resource or benefit that your country can offer the American corporations, then we want it. And we will manipulate your political system, whether you know it or not, overtly or covertly, to serve our interests. Again, America has basically turned into the Roman Empire and the world-based system is the American system. It's built in place to keep America as the superpower in the world. And it's becoming more and more corrupt this way. So, uh, I mean, what what's their prediction? Because uh, we are expecting an election in Bangladesh in the next three months, and in the United States is trying to, uh, I mean, meddle in multiple ways uh, to complicate the situation. Yeah, and so uh, absolutely. Let's just use the take in the in the last election in America. So we don't even have to look at Bangladesh to a foreign country. Let's look at America now. Do I have specific evidence that the election with Donald Trump was rigged? 
No, I don't have any specific evidence. However, do I think the election was not rigged? Meaning the level of trust with our democratic elections in America is so low that even in America, we don't trust our political democratic electoral system, even in America. So now if I look at Bangladesh, if America can do that in America, you don't think they could do that in Bangladesh or countries that don't have as much, you could say, security or or resistance against the American empire? This American globalist empire will do whatever they have to manipulate whatever the system. And we've done that through our history. And again, this is where I would say to Bangladesh is safeguard your system as best you can from the negative influences of America. And I say negative because, again, America doesn't look out for the best interests of Bangladesh, and they don't even look out for the best interests of American citizens. They look out for the best interests of the American globalist corporations and the government itself. So it means, I mean, what you want to say, that uh, <clears throat> Bangladesh is uh, also geographically very important. I mean, strategically, location is very important for the United States to expand is. Uh, hegemony towards this region and if they can establish their footprint in Bangladesh and turn Bangladesh into its colony then sitting in Bangladesh it can control India, Myanmar, China and many other countries. So you think we Bangladesh have become a target of the broader no, I, I would say yeah so I'm a great example if you want to judge you know there there's a saying and you know how you judge a culture Sometimes they say how they treat animals, you know, dogs and cats, how they treat that culture. So look at America. How is the American government treating me as an American citizen, military veteran in this case? There's no reason why I should be on, on media now. There's no reason why I should have written a book. My government should have reached out to me years ago when I submitted the allegations. We should have talked about this. So if my government doesn't care about me, and trust me, they don't care about a lot of military veterans. We have homeless in America. I mean, they don't care. So the point that I'm making is if the American government doesn't really care about American citizens, do you really think they care about Bangladeshi citizens? Of course not. They don't care. The only thing they care about is money. And if you are in line to help them profit, then you're important. If you're not in line to help them profit, then you're not important. Or like me, if you designated the government and the corporations as enemy number one, well, then you're definitely ostracized. We have been talking to Mr. David Van Blatt, a former member of the U.S. Army, FBI, and an author of a book named Patriot Betrayed. Mr. David Van Blatt has been forced to be exiled from the U.S. and now he's in China. And sitting in China, he has written this book, uh, Patriot Betrayed. And uh, Mr. Bembla thinks that, believes that the United States is interfering, interfering into uh, domestic affairs of the foreign nations for the sake of the interest of his own corporations. And he also thinks that the United States is a mafia state and the United States is in Bangladesh with an agenda, and that agenda is to turn Bangladesh into its colony. Thank you very much, Mr. Bonplat, for joining us during this interview, and we hope that we will soon uh, speak to you on other issues and teach the viewer. Thank you very much for watching this interview. Thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity.